how to rise above 3D and manifest everything. Hi, I am your host, Sky Cheyenne, and welcome back once again to Rebuild Reality, where as always, we talk about who we really are, why we're here, and how all of this stuff works. So hold on to your seats, my friends, today, because we've got a master class here. And I've been working on this, putting this together for the last couple of days, because this is a point I really want to get across, and this is going to make a big, big difference. So you ready? Let's hit it. All right. So here we are. We're going through all of this and we're learning about manifestation and the levels of manifestation. And we're trying to do all these things, right? So there are so many different rules <laughs> and different techniques and different ideologies and things going on out there. So we're kind of told a lot of stuff. We're told, love yourself, that you must feel good, that you got to change your self-concept, that you've got to imagine right, you've got to affirm right, you've got to do this so many times, or you can't do that, you have to let it go of this, but you have to hold on to that, you know, and all of it just kind of can really set the mind off, <laughs> you know, the mind's like, ah, you know, um, so that voice in the head can just kind of go crazy, right, so, but it's possible to step out of that, to rise above all of that mind chatter, you know, and, and get out of that finally, right? Because the problem is, I think that we, we think that we can't really manifest anything, that we can't really get it until we finally convince that voice in the head, you know, that who we think we are. So until we clean up all this doubt and all of this fear, we feel like we can't get there yet, you know, we can't make our mind finally agree with us, you know, this is what we keep trying to do, to make it finally agree with us that yes, you are God, oh my God, you're right, you are God, you know, well, the thing is, is that your 3D mind's never going to agree with you about that, it will constantly present another problem and another issue, or what about this, or what about that, you know, and it's just, it because it doesn't know. The 3D mind doesn't understand those things. It doesn't understand the enormity of everything, of, of source, you know? It has no, no concepts of that. So it can't really conceive it because the 3D mind was just made for here. It's just made for, for this realm, for understanding this realm and everything beyond that is just kind of this, you know, <laughs> this world that it's just like, it's not too sure of. So, of course, the 3D mind has a very hard time believing in things that it can't see, you know? So, it's made for this experience. It's not quite made for the rest of it. So, but the rest of your being, the rest of you, all your other senses, your your heart, your inner your inner self, you know. That's the part that knows right? Your imagination is the thing, the doorway that connects to all these other parts of you. So we have to step out of the 3D mind and all of its issues and all of its problems because it otherwise is never, it's always going to be this battle, right? We want to rise above those ideas of good and bad, the duality of the mind. We want to step beyond the duality of this mind thing. So because it's stuck on the journey, right? It's stuck in the story. The, but it's a story that <laughs> never actually ends in you being good enough. You know, you being powerful enough. You having figured it all out enough. Um, you know, so we get stuck in that mind stuff. We get stuck in the thoughts. We get stuck in all the feelings, you know, that are, we're forever swinging from this way to that way. And we believe it. And oh my God, I got it. And then I'm down the toilet, you know? So it's just that constant back and forth that we're just, and, and it just kind of does this in, right? So, which is why we got to step out of it, out of that grasp and out of the idea of, giving it any power because it doesn't know it's not the one that knows that understands these things to begin with so we have to stop giving it so much credence you know so much control um listening to it really so much um because 
it doesn't know anything about you. It can't tell you who you really are, where you came from, how you got here, what's going to happen, you know, when you're going to leave, you know, where you're going to go. It, it doesn't know anything but this stuff, right? The Newtonian physics of this world. That's what it knows. That's what it's good at, right? But it doesn't know the bigger part of you because it wasn't made for that. It was only made for this experience. So, but we keep listening to it. We keep giving it all the power. We keep giving it all the control, all the belief and stuff. And that's where we get off, you know, in the bushes. So we got to stop giving it all that power that we keep giving it, right? Because your mind keeps trying to tell you who you are and who you're not, what you have, what you don't have, what you can do, what you can't do, what's real, what's not real. But it it, it doesn't know jack shit, basically. You know, so um, yeah, all those stories, all the things, you know, it says, which up to now, most everybody just believes hook, line, and sinker. They believe, well, the mind knows. It's like, well, Really? How's that going so far? How's your life working out so far? How good is the mind even at this life? You know, even at, at with this stuff, it's just like, it still doesn't even know that. So it's not even good at this, <laughs> let alone anything else. So that's why we go with our other senses, our inner knowing these other parts of us, because that's the real part of us. So everything in, in your story of of you right now, exists because you've accepted those things as being true for you so but you don't have to they don't have to be your truth anymore you can re you've got the ability and the right to reject you know anything that is no longer true for you or no anything you don't want to be true for you anymore you know that's part of your reality because they can't exist if you disown them, right? So if you shut them out, you shut them down. You know, we always have a choice in that. If stuff is showing up, it's because we're still paying attention to it. We're still seeing it as a problem. We're still involving it in our reality instead of being like, yeah, don't know who you are anymore. Like, I know you're there. I know you're like, Blah, 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 but you know, I'm going to ignore you now, <laughs> quite frankly, um, you know, because, you know, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, your sensations will completely dominate and control you if you don't understand that you can kick any of them out anytime you want, because they're not you, right? They're temporary, right? Thoughts, feelings, sensations, they are all temporary things. And like I've said before, anything that is temporary is not the true you is not the true reality so it's like that um that scene in scripture where it's the evening of you know before jesus's crucifixion and he's with pontius pilate and pontius pilate says don't you know that i have the power to crucify you or to set you free that's your mind that character, Pontius Pilate, is your mind. Don't you know I have the power to crucify you or set you free? Well, of course, Jesus was pretty smart, you know. Um, and he said, you know, because he was like, why aren't you even listening to me? And Jesus is like, you know, like he wasn't even listening to him because he's not listening to that old story. He's not listening to that guy's reality anymore. He's not listening to the mind saying, saying I, I've got all control over you. I can crucify you. I can save you. I'm the one that's in control here. And Jesus is basically like, you know, Jesus says, you would have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. So he's denying the authority. He's like, no, you are non-reality. You are not my reality anymore. You have no ability to do anything to me. So and that's like the parable of the whole story is, is that it's the mind, right? Because what does the mind do? It freaking crucifies us, you know, all the time. So that's the part where we got to pull out and stop giving it that power anymore. So in other words, those thoughts, those words, those feelings, those sensations in 3D can have no power over you unless you say so. 
It's only the fake thoughts in your head that are telling you that you're not already who you want to be. And that's the whole thing because the mind doesn't know who you are. So it makes up these stories of who you are that are obviously extremely untrue. Because <laughs> like I said, it doesn't know, right? So thoughts of doubt, fear, limitations are only the 3D mind's false thoughts and beliefs because it doesn't know what's really going on here. So it doesn't know what's real and what's not real. It is lost. Your 3D mind is lost in the illusion and it's trying to direct you around. And as you know, it's not working out too well, is it, right? So all thoughts, feelings, and sensations are temporary forms. Like I said, they're not the true reality. Sure, they're there, they're conditions, they're, and they're stories and stuff. But now that you know that the mind doesn't know you, doesn't really know what's going on here, doesn't really know even how to navigate 3D very well, let alone, you know, anything outside of here, anything more than this, you know, that your mind is making it all up because it doesn't know what's really going on here. You know, it doesn't know how to control any of this. So because you know that now, you can take control of this situation from a higher perspective. So you stop listening to the mind. You stop giving it so much power and, and belief because it's like a little kid, right? That's like just running your world. You've got like the, what I always call like the two-year-old that is just in control, driving your car and it's leaving parts of you all over the place behind you on the road, you know, it's bashing into everything because it doesn't know what it's doing, right? It's not, it doesn't have a control or the knowledge that's needed here. So, so stop listening to it. Um, so all it, all the mind knows the regular 3D mind, it knows separation. That's its existence. It knows duality. It knows doubt. It knows fear. Whereas you as source, which is your true identity, knows only unity and oneness. Source is never separate from anything. The only reality is wholeness, completeness. And that's all that is. But your mind exists in that dualistic place where it never sees the wholeness. It never sees the oneness. It never, it doesn't understand that. So, you know, so like, so like Jesus to Pontius Pilate, um, who Jesus wasn't answering those thoughts, those things, you're not going to validate them anymore. You're not going to keep validating things that aren't the story you want them to be. Right. So by you stop giving him your attention. Yeah. Things are going on. Your world is happening and stuff, but things that are not the way you want them to be, you're, you're like, mm, don't care, that's the old story. And I know it's still appearing, it's still around me, but, and this is really how it works because whatever you're putting your attention on, you know, it, you start pulling it into your reality. Whatever you stop paying attention to, it starts to fade into the background. And that's how this reality really, you know, really comes together you know how it all unfolds and stuff so so don't give that voice in your head the right to choose your reality anymore you choose it it's your servant the mind is your servant you are its master you get to tell it not it tell you so that transfer of power needs to happen <laughs> Right? So declare yourself the only true power, the only true reality, because that is the truth. That is the reality that is actually going on here. Otherwise, your inner voice will never, ever give you permission. You're not here to convince your mind, though. That's not your job, because it's never going to be convinced, right? So, so don't even attempt it. You know, don't try to tell someone who can't conceive of what you're talking about. And that is, of course, the mind. You're here to claim your true identity and take your rightful place again. So it's dethroning the mind and being like, no, you work for me. You're going to think of what I want you to think of. You're going to imagine what I want you to imagine. I'm going to put you to work, not you running me all over the place like... I always say like the emotions, things like that. It's like you got this little rag doll, right? And you're just like, 
bam, 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 well, that's the mind. Because that's what it does to us, doesn't it? You know, it has us running in circles, what it thinks is the truth, what it thinks it sees, what it thinks it hears, all this stuff, which, of course, even if you look at that scientifically, is like, well, yeah, 50% of your memories are wrong. You know, the eyes actually don't see anything. Um, most of people's memories are either totally fabricated or they are um, completely bias they are like turned around to support the story of the of the person who they want to be so there's all this stuff going on that we think is reality here that's it's not at all you know it's even like all the uh and it's of course it's isn't it's so hilarious isn't it really that all the the chat you know ai chat gpt gb what is it gpt and all of that stuff they found out that all that stuff is it doesn't know the answer it can't find it it's make it's making it up it's literally lying and making it up and telling you what's not true well who does that sound like well of course because it's a copy of us isn't it so you know it's what do we think this reality is so yeah so don't give that mind the right to choose your reality anymore right so you are the divine being because you're the one. It's not the one. You are. And the only voice, the only true voice is the divine spirit and the voice of truth within you, the I am within you. So what is the I am? The I am is the power of source, the power of God, of the creator within you. That's right where, you know, what it is. It's your, it's your seat of power. It's where you belong. It's the declaration, I am, you know, and that's the power. And there is no other. That means that I rule here. This is my thing. You know, I don't need to listen to anybody else because I create my reality. And it is taking that control and taking that power in that way that it, there, it is so like, that is it. I don't care. I'm not listening to anything else. I'm putting my foot down and that's just the end of it. This is my world. I'm telling you, that's the kind of thing that it takes when you're like, no, no way. Not in my world. No way, you know? So it's you moving from, we see ourselves as outside. You can like imagine like a circle, right? with a dot in the middle and we're out here going I wish I had all that stuff I wish I was inside I wish I had everything it's like no you're not out here that's the mind that's out there you are in the center of everything you are in the center of the divine mind which means you're not going to anything everything's coming to you because you are the center you're the seat of power you are the seat of control you are the one dictating you know not not the mind dictating so um, changing that kind of conception of yourself around, you know, placing yourself as the one and only source of all things and stop listening to the old voice, the old stories anymore. You don't live there anymore. You cannot be found there because you don't live in that story anymore. It's just like some old story. You can write it down if you want, tear it up because that's not your story anymore. You get to change the story and not denying the existing, you know, thing, not running from it, not turning away from it, just not giving it any power, any reality anymore. Just not so much of a big thing because you're like, what is that? Like, that's nothing. That doesn't even matter anymore. I don't even care about that anymore. And it's like when you're around a person and they're like, ah, and you're like, I don't care. What? I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. You just pull the plug. You know, there's this tug of war that they're trying to do. Like your mind's trying to do this tug of war with you. And you're like, I don't actually care. Couldn't care less. Whoa. You just unseated that voice, unseated that power and kicked it out. It's like, have you ever been in a movie theater and you're watching the movie and you're totally sucked in? You're absolutely engrossed in it. And then suddenly you go... Oh, and you look over to the side 
and you see like people there and people there and you see them and they're just like like that they are in that movie and you just realized you were in that movie but suddenly you kind of pulled yourself out of it and you're like oh there's all these people and that's what it's like it's pulling yourself like out of the mind oh what's going on here and you're like oh, I don't like this movie I'm gonna walk out and I'm going to go into another movie theater because you're in this complex of any movie you can possibly want to watch. And you can pull yourself out of that where you, we get sucked in. And I used to know someone who was like, they would call it where you're kind of falling down the well. Or it would be like these fascinations where you're so fascinated you can't stop looking at it, you know, kind of thing. And it's like when you're in those big movie theaters and there's surround sound and wraparound screens and everything. We get sucked into this. So we pull ourselves out and be like, mm, nope, nope, that's not my story anymore. I'm going to the next movie theater where I wrote the script, right? So it's that same kind of thing where you're like, no. And you put your foot down, like I said, there, you have no, you answer to no other voice but your own but your own conscious desires, your plan, your story. You don't answer to anybody else's version, the mind's version of things anymore. So making the choice of who you are now and let go of the outside. So this is like a turning around because it doesn't appear out here first. It appears in here. So when we go in through our imagination, which is where the true reality actually is, we watch there. We look there because it's already there. That's why asking it's given. Yeah, as soon as you imagine it, yep, it's there. Because this is actually the true, as bizarre as it sounds, this is the true reality within in our imagination, with our mind. Whereas this is the projection, what we see in 3D. So we want it to appear here first. And we're like, mm, living in this reality. Like, so we give less power less reality less truth to out here and we we turn within and we're like no because this is the true reality because this is my world and guess what this has already happened in my world right so we choose to you know deny any other voices but the one that is our own voice of our own decisions of what we want you know so and anything else that comes in you you kind of vet it. You're like, you have to start watching yourself. Or you're like, you know, because it starts chatting shit again. And you're just like, hold on. Wait a minute. No, I'm not going to accept that. No. It's like if you had someone there all the time who was just like, me, 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 following you around. You'd be like, you don't want to start agreeing with them. You want to be like, you want to start challenging them. No, actually, that's not true for me anymore. Oh, what about this? No, God, wait, do you go to work tomorrow? I'm like, no, actually... That's not my problem anymore. I don't live there anymore. You know, you start being like, no, no, no. And you start standing firm in your truth and your story. What you're like, no, no. Because that's like, oh, this is reality. This is blah, 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 all these things. And you're like, no, that's not true anymore. Nope, that's not happening anymore. Nope, I'm not going to listen to that. Just boom, 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 you know. And things start to come to a standstill. You know, there it's kind of like, oh, well, well, you can kind of feel it a lot of times where it's like, oh, they're not just accepting it anymore. You know, it's like it's like throwing a monkey wrench, you know, into things where it's like starts the program starts to, to wobble and stuff. You know, where you're like, no, nope, I'm here. I'm in control. And this is listening to me because like they say, what's that saying? That's like if you aren't writing your own story you know if you're not telling your own story then you're living your own reality your own truth your own desires you're living somebody else's you know out there or in that mind of ours so you have the power because you are the power the thoughts the feelings the the body are all temporary things you are the only true reality you know you're and this is so true you're literally the only true reality here your own you and inside your being your imagination all this is literally the only true reality because when you step out of this 3d you know story 
that will be what remains. Not all this stuff. This comes and goes and it won't even mean anything then. You know, trust me, I've been there. So you have the power because you are the power. So refuse to give your thoughts, you know, any reality um, anymore unless they support your version of yourself that you want to be. So you don't have to be manic about it. You don't have to go crazy about it. It's just like, nope, 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 you know, because you're not the mind. You're not the thoughts that are positive and negative and positive and negative the feelings and sensations, you know, of the body, you know, um, you're that awareness that is occupying this little suit here right now in this projection, right? Like I said, it's meant to be for entertainment purposes, really. It's supposed to be for fun. And then we kind of forgot that, right? Where the awareness, you know, that is within here. So that's who you are. So you were actually never born and you will never, ever die. You will always be because consciousness always is. You are that divine being. You are that divine power. You are a great, literally immortal being. That's who you are. And this, it doesn't even come close. And so stepping out of this duality, stepping out of this 3D mindset and all of this where you're pulling back from the movie screen going, oh, you know, you step out of those dual ideologies, right? So fear, fear isn't real. Fear isn't there because there isn't non-fulfillment. So there isn't actually anything to be afraid of because we are have become convinced, oh my God, I may not get what I want or what I need or oh my God, this and that. Oh, that's just the separation, you know, that's just the a side effect of separation, like I've said. So fear isn't real. The only one that makes it real that can make it solid or take place in your life is us. Otherwise, it's just another thing that comes up. Oh my God, oh my God, no. Oh my God, oh my God, no. Oh my God, oh my God. no. Sorry. You don't, live, you don't live here anymore, you know? You know, for, for myself, I'm always like, I don't care what the ego says. I don't care what the, the all that stuff says. I get what I want. Oh, what about these feelings? Oh, you didn't do that right. You didn't do this right. And oh, then you got pissed off. And, and you know, when you weren't happy, you know, and you didn't think the right thing or, you know, you didn't do it long enough or this or that. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not involved in any of that anymore because I'm the only reality here. And if I am God and I am just like you are, then there is no separation. So there is, why would I have to, go towards to any techniques why would i have to do anything right to get what i already am you know it doesn't make sense right so i don't care what 3d says i get what i want you know because this is a construct this whole thing is a construct that is run by our minds and we really kind of talked about that with quantum physics and stuff, right? So don't give that voice in your head the right to choose your reality anymore, you know? Because this construct, like we've spoken about in quantum physics and all of that in the last number of, I don't know, half dozen videos or more, when you really look into it, it proves absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are creating our reality full stop and it is our thoughts that are connecting and signaling the subatomic particles that make up all matter what to turn into and it's just as simple as that it's just that there there's a connection and it's happening faster than the speed of light so it happens faster than we actually see it that's why we don't see the correlation if we could if it was slowed down and we could see like i'm thinking these thoughts and it's like it's flipping, and we're like, oh, what do you know? And then we're like, oh, I'll think something nice, and it flips back. And you're like, whoa, that's how it works. But we don't we don't see that, right? So it's true that you are the only true reality here because all this is constantly flipping. And that's just this this movie theater that we're in, this 365, you know, degree movie theater. So you don't even need to feel good before you get what you want. 
because we think that we need to be in a good mood and stuff. But no, that's putting conditions on it, isn't it? And if creator God loves unconditionally, there's no conditions. There are no conditions to be met on anything. So if there's no conditions, then that means that all this stuff that we go through about trying to be good enough, trying to do things right, trying to be happy enough, trying to be positive enough, you know, to do all of those things aren't actually true because there's nobody we're pleasing. There's nobody to please. There's no rules to be met. There's no regulations. There's no conditions that we have to meet in order to get anything we want. The only thing we have to do is realize what's going on here, that this is a construct and we're doing it with our mind. It's like, oh my God, okay, I am source. I am the creator, literally, because we are the creator and the source of all of this. So this is a, it's a matter of like, understanding what this is, that this is a construct and that this is run by your mind. And we've spoken about this in a number of videos now where we're talking about quantum physics. So even scientifically, this is true. This is literally what is happening is that our thoughts, the electrical, you know, signal that is put out measurably so by our thoughts is is signaling the subatomic matter that makes up all matter because they are electrically charged as well. And the two of them are going communicating. That's the communication system here that's happening that we don't even realize because it's happening faster than the speed of light that that reality, because you, you're born new and every single moment, this reality is new in every single moment of now, 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 now. Which means that if you got up to speed to that, things for you would change instantly because they'd have to, because this is constantly, we're constantly flipping everything, constantly changing it with our thoughts because we're constantly communicating it and it's constantly responding to all of our thoughts. So switching that around is obviously big, you know, then we understand that we're the power behind all of it, right? So the whole idea that you need to convince anyone or anything to give you all the things that you want is nothing more than a severe case of misplaced identity. So no separation. What do we have, right? That's already so many times been proven for heaven knows how long. You know, there is no time. There is no space. They are not real. Separation is not real. The mind is like, well, that's all I say. It's convinced of it, which is why we don't listen to the mind because it doesn't know. Sure, it knows like to remind you to go and get a gift for Sarah's birthday on Thursday. And, you know, to don't forget to turn right here or that you need some more milk, you know, in the fridge. And that's what it's for. That's what it's for, for these little things, for this experience. It's not supposed to be directing everything, right? So no separation means that there are, is no conscious and unconscious mind. There's no higher self. There's no lower self. There's no big you. There's no little you. There's just you. You pretending, limiting yourself for this experience and kind of basically pretending that not me because otherwise you couldn't have any kind of experience like this right so you're literally like the man behind the curtain in the wizard of oz where you're you got your hands on all the you know the buttons and everything the whole the whole board there and you don't even realize it like you're out in the experience and you're like oh my god that's me too running the whole show so if you believe that you need to impress the subconscious mind that you need to communicate with the body because you see them as separate from you then you're believing in the illusion because there is only one mind one consciousness one awareness right there is no separation means all is one all is god all is creator all is source and all of this every little bit of it is you that's how powerful you are. 
that you can think a thought, that you can imagine an image and have it become this real. That's the power that is you. That's who you are. That is who you are. You're not this little, you know, bits of like, oh my God, I have no control and no power. Mm -mm -mm. So the idea that you need to push, that you need to demand, that you need to control, that you need to impress, you need to influence anything would be declaring that you are not God and that is impossible. There is no way because there is unity. All things are one thing. Look at it scientifically, look at it spiritually, look at it in any way, and this is the truth, right? That's the truth that you find. So it is impossible for you not to be God, not to be source, not to be the creator. It's literally impossible, right? So which means that with no time, no space, no separation, that everything is there in reality, in truth, for the taking, instantly, absolutely, now. Because how could it not be if everything is here now? So it's all just a seeing things differently. And we see things differently, we perceive things differently, your entire reality changes. When you look at yourself differently, then everything reflects that new identity that you see yourself as. So shifting to your true identity means you get to decide everything. So don't even worry about convincing the 3D mind because it doesn't know the real you. It doesn't know who you are. It doesn't even know how you got here, right? So um, it can't see from its perspective. It can't see the things, you know, that that you want it to see. It's not going to understand it. It was made for 3D. So rise above it. Be transformed. Be transmuted. You know, most of us really get stuck thinking that we have to convince our 3D mind of all these things to get it to finally believe. But, but we don't, you know, we only need to accept the truth of our true identity. And, you know, as source, we don't have to wait until we heal. We don't have to wait till the 3D mind understands, you know, absolutely everything just to know that it doesn't have the ability to perceive the truth of who you are. That's all you need to know. And I think that's becoming pretty evident, <laughs> you know, that the mind, it's not the way to go, really. <laughs> you don't even, you don't even need to be happy. Right. In order for the truth of who you really are to be accepted, you know, by this, be like, no, it's just a declaration. Right. Because that you need to be happy has that whole idea that you need to be happy has made a slave out of you. Right. So exit that never ending journey to happiness. And I know that's going to sound like an absolutely terrible idea. Are you kidding me? What is there to even live for if I don't, you know, pursue happiness, right? But this isn't what's taking place here. Because what's actually taking place when you're rising above it is you're leaving the dualistic state of trying to escape unhappiness and finally arrive at happiness, right? That constant never-ending journey that you never get there. You never finally completely, you know, leave behind unhappiness and arrive at happiness forever. It doesn't happen because it's a dualistic state and duality isn't real, right? So instead of trying to do that because it's an illusion, illusion to begin with, anything dualistic is an illusion to begin with. It's not the truth of who you are. Instead, you're rising above that swing state of good and bad, happy and unhappy, that dualistic place. You move from a state of being divided then into a state of wholeness, instead of a state of completeness, instead of that not there yet thing. You rise above good and bad. You rise above happy and sad. 
above wanting and needing because you've already got it all. You don't need to fix then. You don't have to fix thoughts and feelings or sensations because you've they've all been created by not knowing who you are. That is what creates all of those issues, all the problems, by not really understanding what's going on here, by not knowing who you really are. But knowing who you really are now, that you are the consciousness that created this construct, is how you finally step out of it, right? So... All of this, like we've been talking about for the last, I don't know, several videos now. And we introduced quantum physics in this. And we can finally see that not only from a spiritual perspective, what they've been told, telling us, you know, for thousands of years, this is an illusion. This is not real. This is you are the creator. You are the only reality. All of this stuff. And we're like, I don't understand how that could be true. Well, now that's what I love about quantum physics because it shows exactly how that is true. And it shows, like we've spoken about, how our thoughts are sending out an electrical signal that is interacting with the signal of subatomic particles that make up all matter, directing them what to do. Faster than the speed of light, faster than we can, than the conscious mind, that we're the 3D mind, can pick up on. So it doesn't see the correlation between what we're thinking and what we're getting. If it could, it'd be like, Oh, I thought about this and like, whoa, hold on a minute. I'm going to think about this. Oh, that's much better. You know, but we're not seeing that. But this is literally what's what's happening here. So rising above good and bad, happy and sad, rising above wanting and needing to fix all these things, you know, and knowing who you really are, that you are the consciousness behind this, all of this movie theater because this is how it works. This is the true reality, right? So when we understand that this is the true reality and this is a projection of our mind, literally, then everything we think changes and we see that change happen out here. When we, we finally accept, when we finally understand what the hell is going on here that this is literally that construct that we've created with our minds and like oh my god it really freaking is true this is really true you can look it up and find it out right not only like i said this all the spiritual ancient texts for thousands of years have said it but now quantum physics says it too that this is what is happening and when you understand like well hold on so i'm the one who's actually really in control here i can actually flip this whole thing around by being like holy shit i really am source i really am the creator because there's no division no separation you can't be anything but that that eliminates worry that eliminates stress that eliminates fear and that changes your whole life that sets you free forever when you understand this whole construct and what's actually going on here and how you can actually overcome it all, right? And the only one then that you need to overcome is yourself because there's nobody else here and there's no out there, out there. This is a projection, verifiably, scientifically true so wrap your head around that be like freaking a this is my world now i rule i belong here the only one i gotta control nothing out there just myself that's why your mind your 3d mind it can get in the back seat now and come along for the ride but now you're gonna drive and that is how to finally rise above 3D conditions, 3D reality, and manifest everything you have ever wanted. Full stop. So I am your host, Sky Cheyenne.
And thank you for being with me here once again on Rebuild Reality. Thank you for coming along for the ride in my reality, in my movie theater. <laughs> and thank you so much to all the wonderful subscribers, all of you who have subscribed. You know, I really appreciate it. It's really nice in my story to have. And I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much for your wonderful comments, your amazing comments. So let me know that you're there. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Because it does make, in the story of YouTube story, <laughs> it makes a difference in their world. And it's a fun little thing to play with. But thank you for being here, most of all. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Rebuild Reality.